You are listening to Backstage Pass Podcast, hosted by Hannah Trigwell and brought to you by Tommy. Hello, Tommy Reynolds. How are you? I'm very good, Hannah. How are you doing? I am good. It's been a long time. Long, long, long time. time. Very long we time. We were talking just now off camera. I think it, I think the last time I saw you in person might have been eight, seven or eight years ago. Was it? It was Boy Seven U concert, right? We were just ten years old. Because <laughs> <laughs> you did some shoots and you did gig photography for Boy 7 You, right? I was their tour photographer in 2012 and I did their London shows a few years prior to that when they kind of understood my work and then um, then they got me on board in 2012, which would be around the time that you and I got to know each other. And now you are a highly renowned international photographer. And um, I know that you've branched out into doing different things, but could you give the... Um, the audience of Backstage Past Podcast a uh, kind of lowdown on how you got that gig with Boyce Avenue, the, the first one where I met you. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So that's how my journey started as a music photographer. I started uh, photographing my friends' bands and asking in exchange for photographing them, could could they get me in for free? And I'll I'll shoot I'll shoot your band for free. Uh, that that's how it started. That that was my journey. And then it eventually progressed to reaching out to bands and artists and asking if I can be in the pit again, not charging anything, not asking for any money, just do it for free and I'll hand you the images over. And um, to, then 2012, when you and I met through Boyce Avenue, when I, I got to work with Boyce Avenue, uh, yeah. I reached out to uh, Alejandro directly, actually. It was on his um, on his Facebook before he was bombarded with uh, maximum amount of friend requests I actually reached out to him <laughs> and uh, yeah. and he actually responded within f- 15 minutes he said because uh, I just said I see you're, um, you're, you're in London soon here's some of my work is there any chance I can photograph photograph the band and he said yeah sure that'll be great gave me an email address to uh, finalise all the details and that was um, possibly 2010 2011 and then the following year I approached them again and said, can I do it again? You're in London again. Can I do it again? They said, yeah, that's fine. And then I, 2012, I got an email. I oh, sorry, I think I emailed them saying, again, can I photograph you? Because I just really enjoyed the music as well. Um, yeah. And then they said, you know what? Do you fancy coming on tour with us? And that was my first big tour as a photographer with a band to go around with the band and see the UK. But it's interesting because I, I had a taste of what music, how musicians describe touring where it sounds glamorous but you barely see the city you're there for a day you're shooting some some test shots that before the gig the gig happens and then you're on the bus or you're straight to the next city so it's not quite as glamorous as uh as people say so I kind of got a taste yeah. of that and uh and because I'm so passionate about music photographing music is the closest thing for me to being a musician or getting as close <laughs> to the stage as I as I can so that's yeah. kind of how I started. And then I kind of branched into doing other things, portraits with musicians rather than just them photographing them live. People always talk about in the music industry that press shots are important. Press shots that aren't like too formal, but look really good um, in terms of like quality and almost are like storytelling and get your personalities and artists through the photograph. How does a photographer managed to do all that <laughs> in like one photo you know it, it needs to look good but not be too serious or too formal but show the personality of the person but not be too like casual with it it's such a fine balance isn't it 100% and that's a really good question as well Hannah well first of all I need to hear their music so that's the first question I ask I need to get a taste of what they're about the kind of vibe I look at their previous work I look at some of their previous press shots so I get an idea of what they've what they've been well might necessarily been happy with but what they've gone ahead with and what they've what is their kind of style obviously have a chat with them before the shoot as much as I can before the shoot we share Pinterest boards mood boards and I'll have multiple mood boards uh for that shoot so uh, there might be a mood board just for um colors uh the location another one might be uh lighting an idea of how they like to be lit it, it gives me a good vibe of if they want it more soft and airy or if they like more moody and dramatic. And also gives me an idea, as we said, how formal are we going? 
not too formal? Is it informal? Uh, like, are they happy for me to kind of go all out or are they quite traditional? And on the shoot as well, at, when we get to the day, I do a thing called tethering. And that's an, uh, a process where the photographer will have their camera attached to a laptop or a computer. So as I'm taking the images, the images are firing onto my laptop. And for me, that is one of the most important steps of the whole process because that tethering process, it's a collaboration. Photography is a collaboration. It's not solely up to me to get the photo. It's between myself and say you, Hannah, work, working together to get the shot that you and I are both happy with. And ultimately you're happy with, it's your image. And that's why the tethering station for me is so, so important. I We won't move on to the next setup until you and I are both happy. Because the last thing you want to do is finish a shoot, send the images over. And it's like, oh, ugh, I, well, if only the lighting was, or if only I wasn't doing that. So what I would do is I'll maybe take 20 or 30 images, like I call them rounds. I'll go, right, we'll just do a quick round. And then they'll come to the laptop. And I'm doing something really important there. I'm gauging their reaction to the images. What kind of posing that they put themselves in. Like if they look a certain way and they say, oh, I really like that. Then I'll maybe make mental notes to maybe get more poses from future setups in that kind of position. If somebody's not necessarily like a pro photographer, but is maybe like an upcoming musician and has been asked to supply some good quality photos. We've all got these phones now that have amazing, they are amazing, but they are, they're, they're more limited than, a, than what I would think of as an amazing standalone camera, but they've got great inbuilt cameras. And I think there's a lot you can do just with an iPhone these days mm. in terms of getting some good pictures, but would you be able to give some like tips on how to do that yourself if you did just have an iPhone, if you did just have any phone? Yeah, so uh, if you don't even have flash photography, that's fine. We've got natural light, summer's coming up. This is going to be a great opportunity for you to get some great natural light shots. And don't be afraid of hard sunlight as well because people think that we have to wait for a cloudy day. Well, waiting for uh, having having direct sunlight can give you a dramatic and nice shadows but it can throw your phone off because at the end of the day our phones are just um a, a robot eye it doesn't know exactly what you're yeah. fo photographing it's going to give you an average reading but if you're photographing um uh, a white person in a white dress in front of a white wall the camera's going to get it wrong the same for the right. other same for the other way around because it's just getting an average reading but there are tips you uh, and and tricks you can do with iPhones. Even with doesn't even need to be the latest iPhone with portrait mode. All the iPhones will have um, uh, an a uh, an exposure lock. So it's a little thing where you can actually tap um, you tap or you hold your hold the uh, the shutter down and then you push it up or down. And when you do that, that will actually make the image brighter or darker. And in photography, really, yeah, yeah, <laughs> I did not know that. Did you not? Hang on, no. let, me, let me just, because uh, I've just got, this is this phone is, is I've just got it recently. Okay, yeah, so you tap to get a focus, and then once you've tapped, you then hold it down where the square is, and you can go up or down, and that will make the image brighter or darker. Oh, yes, amazing. Photography terms, that's called exposure compensation. You're compensating for what the camera thinks is right. You're basically saying, no, you're, not, you're almost there, but you're not quite right. This needs to be a bit darker. And then by, mm. by doing that, you can nail the exposure or how you see it in your eye. And what about lighting? What would be like a basic kind of do's and don'ts? Basic do's and don'ts. So if you are using, if, if you're using iPhones in particular, uh, you don't really want to put a subject in front of a window where light's coming in because you've probably tried to take an image maybe in the past and it's very backlit, like they just become a silhouette. So the eye, so, so it's much better to then flip them 180 degrees so have the window behind you so you've got the nice, beautiful, soft light. What about if you have like, let's say, a window and a lamp? What would you do? A window and a lamp. That's um, So that's an interesting one because window light is, is, uh, is different to this light. So you can see the colour is different. So really what you want to do is you really want to be isolating one or the other because otherwise, you, again, your camera is going to get confused. Is it going to think that this is correct light or is this correct light? You might right. have taken photos where it looks really, really blue 
And that's because the camera thought it was getting it right, but it got it wrong. So if you can, if you want to get a moody image, so say with this lamp, if you can close the curtains or close the natural light coming in, so you're only being exposed by this. So actually I've got a light hitting me. Let's see if I can do it right live. Hang on. The, the key is also to get it as close as possible. So if I get this really nice and close, yeah. you get that nice kind of side lit look to, to the image. So if I, hang on. <laughs> it is quite dramatic. So easily, I, I went from natural light, closing it off to just something that's quite moody and dramatic like that. Let's see if I can switch this back on. So again, so I've, I switched the light on. I'm now changing my settings to let in more light. And then it feels like it's a, a very well lit day. There we go. Mm. So you, you can go from two setups in seconds. If you want more tips, head over to Tommy's channel. <laughs> I know that you run some really cool workshops and stuff, and I'm sure there's loads of useful stuff in there as well. I'm assuming that sometimes on photo shoots, you listen to music to be either yourself or the, the I guess you call it the subject, in the right frame of mind for whatever you're trying to convey through the photograph. So hopefully this will be an easy question to answer, but what is your track of the week? I'm loving Sam Cooke at the moment. That's that's my jam. I love Sam Cooke, nice. especially his live stuff. What is the best lesson that you've learned in your career so far? Okay, the best lesson I've learned in my career is just because someone is superior who might have be well established in their industry doesn't mean that the advice that they give you is right. Now, the way I'm saying that, you there's clearly but clearly there's there's, mm -hmm. there's a story there but <laughs> but um I, yeah i've i've been st i've been stung a couple of times where people have given me advice and i think what i'm trying to say is advice what they think is good advice is not always right for you everyone yeah. is different don't believe everyone who you seem to be more superior because they are not you we are all different we're all new unique try everything shoot 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 because the more yeah. you shoot the more you learn and if you stop if you stop learning and you stop progressing. So I do one personal project a month and I've done that for four years and that, stop, that keeps the love of photography for me. I, it's a shoot for me, no one else, it's my thing. And what I learn in that, I put in the back burner and I can pull that out on a paid commercial shoot. But that's something that, um, that I've enjoyed doing. So don't listen to people who are superior, try it anyway. You won't know until you try it and also keep experimenting, keep progressing and keep shooting. Thanks for being a guest on today's episode. It's been awesome to talk to you. No problem. Thanks ever so much for having me, Hannah. It was good to see you again. Thanks for tuning in to this episode. Be sure to hit subscribe and leave a comment to let us know what you think. And I will see you next time on Backstage Pass.